Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a horror film from 2010, titled Devil. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man can be seen cleaning the inside of a building when suddenly a body falls on the truck outside. Two men are talking at a dinner. They have a conversation about alcoholism and the importance of forgiveness for people like the one in the suit who are recovering alcoholics. The same one says that forgiveness isn't easy after what happened to his family five years ago and wishes they could talk about normal stuff instead. Later, the same man is revealed to be a detective as he crosses a police line. Another cop takes him to a crime scene and shows him the dented truck with the dead body on top. He checks the out body and looks up at the buildings surrounding the truck. The other detective can't believe a jump with such a force can happen from buildings that small. The first detective notices that there is no glass on the pavement surrounding the truck and thinks that it rolled out to the place where it was found. The two detectives walk around a corner to find a building that would better match their crime scene. Next to a modern-looking skyscraper, the characters are introduced one by one. First is the man in the hoodie lingering, then the man with a red tie, passing by him and walking inside the building. Next is the security guard, picking up the phone at the reception desk and the old lady seen standing in the middle of the lobby, confused. Then, there is the young woman entering the lobby, passing the security guard at the reception, getting stopped by him and going to the back of the line to sign the visitor's log. The security guard tells the other man at the reception area that he has to take a package to the 39th floor and goes toward the elevators. The guy with the red tie and the old lady want to go inside an elevator, but because it's full, they take the other one that just arrived empty behind them. They walk in and the security guy walks in with them too. As the door starts closing someone calls out to wait and the young woman from before walks in too. After her, another person yells, grabs the doors after no one helps him and walks inside. It's the same guy with a hoodie. Once they're all inside, the elevator starts moving, but very suddenly, stops and jams. Meanwhile, an older security guard is watching a hockey game in the main security room. A younger security guard walks in the room and they chat about the game. He notices that one of the elevators is in inspection mode, so the older security guard calls the building engineer about the problem, while the engineer is trying to fix a broken window high up in the building. The guard tells the engineer to check on the elevator first, because there are people stuck inside. Back in the elevator the security guard is getting anxious. The old lady keeps pressing him about emergency procedures, but he doesn't know because he's a temp. The guy in the red tie hits the emergency button and joins the old lady's questioning, by asking why he doesn't have a walkie-talkie. A voice comes on from the comm system in the elevator, telling them that he knows they're stuck and that there is an engineer on the way to see what's wrong. The older security guard is the one talking to them over comm and asks them to say something in the camera which makes him figure out that there is something wrong with the microphone and he can't hear them. The security guard on the elevator tries calling the lobby from his cell phone, but gets no signal, so the young woman gives him her phone. The call is short and loses signal fast. Music starts playing in the elevator and the guy in the red tie stats singing, annoying everyone inside. The building engineer is on his way to the machine room at the top, where the wind sweeps off his hat and he almost falls off the side. Back down at the foot of the building, the two detectives are approaching and talking. The detective from the diner finds glass on the pavement and they see a man nearby sweeping more glass. He tells the man to stop doing that and declares the place a crime scene. A huge chunk of glass falling from the building almost killing his partner, confirms his suspicion. Back inside the building, the engineer is seen checking the elevator from the shaft. He calls the main security room to tell them that it looks fine, but that he will reset it. Back at the elevator the older security guard tells the group over comm that the light will be out for about 20 seconds. The lights go out and when they come back on, the old lady screams at the security guard to get away from her to which he apologizes, telling everyone that he's very claustrophobic. The third man pushes a panel from the top of the elevator and air starts coming inside. The security guard asks if they should try climbing up, but the other man says that it's dangerous going up the cable. Back at the machine room, the engineer asks the main security if the reset worked and when they answer that it didn't, he says he'll go check out the problem from the basement. The two guards in the main security office talk about the broken window in the building and how someone might have jumped trough it that morning. The younger one is very concerned to hear that. Back on the elevator, the man in the red tie gives the old lady his business card. The group starts having a conversation prompted by a comment he makes about the old lady. He tells them that he knows how to tell if someone is rich or not and compares the old lady to the young woman, saying that the younger one's clothes look expensive. She turns her back at him, but quickly reacts saying that he grabbed her behind. As the lights in the elevator start flickering, the older guard in the main office calls the engineer asking if he is doing that. 
The engineer says that he's just looking at the elevators from below and that it looks fine from there too. He pulls a lever on the side of the elevator and asks if that helped. The older security guard informs the engineer that there had been no change, so he says he will go back on the roof and reset it manually. The lights in the elevator flicker again. They're watching it happen from the main office, when the younger guard sees something strange on the screen that scares him. The engineer hears a strange noise and follows it under the elevators. Chasing after it, he almost gets crushed by an elevator dropping down the shafts. The lights in the elevator flicker again and then go out completely. Strange noises are heard in the elevator, as the lights go on and off. When the light comes back on for the third time, the young woman is lying on the ground. The guards in the main office ask what's going on, when the younger one notices that the young woman's back is hurt. The people inside are panicking. Red tie man notices that he has blood on him and tries to hide it from the others. The young woman says that it felt like something bit her, so the third man asks if anyone has anything sharp that might have hurt her. The security guard in the elevator then sees the blood on the man with the red tie. As he tries to explain that she just fell on him, the security guy goes to frisk him for a weapon. The guards watching for the security room decide that they need to call the police, since there has now been an assault inside the elevator. Outside of the building the cop from the diner is talking to forensics, when the call about the elevator comes in. He sees that the call is about the building with the broken window and takes the case, bringing along his partner. Back at the main office, the younger guard finds the footage from the moment he saw something strange on the screen and shows it to the older one, who dismisses it as just grain. The younger one grabs his cross certain he'd seen something evil, but the older one tries to calm him down. Inside of the elevator, the security guard and the third man try to pry open the doors. Even if they could, they don't know if there's an opening in the shaft they could climb to. The old lady is afraid that the elevator is just dangling and might drop down. The man in the red tie tries to help with the doors, but he's sent to the back of the elevator away from the others so to keep an eye on him, still thinking that he hurt the young woman. In the meantime, the two detectives arrive at the main security office where the older guard shows them the security camera and explains the assault. He tells them that the others in the elevator think the man in the red tie was to blame. After the detective assesses the situation, he tells the security guards that they should ask for a repair man from the elevator company and tells his partner to call the fire department. He then asks about the people inside, particularly interested about the security guard. After finding out that he's a temp, he tells the guards in the main office to pull up his files. The younger guard tells him about what he saw in the footage, but the older guard brushes it off again. The detective dismisses it too and tells the people in the elevator to show their IDs to the camera, so he can see who they are. Unfortunately, the writing on the IDs is illegible, so the detectives and the older security guard go to the lobby to check the visitor's log and find out that way. Back at the main security office, the younger guard is keeping track on the security camera from the elevator, when the lights inside flicker again. Inside of the elevator, the young woman suddenly sees all of the people disappear and reappear as bloody dead bodies on the floor. A second later it's as if that never happened and everyone is in their place. The lights go out completely again. The mirror in the elevator shatters and strange noises are heard in the dark again. When the light comes back on, the man with the red tie is revealed to be stabbed in the neck with a piece of glass from the mirror. Meanwhile, the younger guard calls the two detectives back. They see that the man is dead, so the detective calls for backup. When he starts reviewing the footage, the younger guard starts telling everyone a story. He says that situations like these always start with a suicide and people getting hurt when the devil is near. Sometimes he takes human form and torments people. The last thing he says is that one of those people in the elevator might be the devil. The detectives, uninterested in what the guard is saying, continue reviewing the footage and suspect the security guard in the elevator might be involved in the murder. The partner says that his files show him to be a violent criminal. The group inside the elevator is also talking about who the murderer might be. The fire department arrives at the building. In the main security office, the detective tells the people inside the elevator that the place is a crime scene now. The detective doubts that what happened was an accident, but says the people don't look like killers. He gets an idea and asks one of them to volunteer. He then tells the man to take out a piece of paper from the dead man's pocket. The man raises up a letter to the camera, which the people in the office decipher and realize the dead man was going to see someone in the building. The detectives go to meet with the fire department first and after the detective from the diner goes to the level of the building with a broken window. Forensics tell him that the suicide note the jumper left is very strange, with the words I can hear the devil's footsteps draw near written last. Outside of the elevator, the firemen try to pry its doors open, but they won't budge. Inside, one of the men is trying to get out trough the top of the elevator, but the security guard pulls him back down, 
thinking he's trying to escape. The detective is talking to the person from the building that was supposed to meet with the dead man from the elevator. He finds out that he was a scam artist and asks the person for a list of the people he has scammed. Back at the elevator, the people start frisking one another. Meanwhile at the main security office, the detective is back and tells his partner that one of the people probably didn't sign in. If they were out to kill the man with the red tie, they wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. He gives him the other list and tells him to compare the two. Then he goes over to the security guards and the young guard shows him the face from the footage, but in turn the detective shows him the apology note that was left by the person that killed his wife and child in a car crash. He says that people can be evil without the help of the devil. While they're talking, the old guard is reviewing the footage, when he finds the moment when the young woman thinks someone grabs her. The footage doesn't show anyone doing it. The detective thinks she's lying and becomes suspicious of her too. They see the people in the elevator frisking each other and tell them to stop. Inside the elevator, an argument starts up again and the old lady threatens to pepper spray the security guard. He grabs the spray from her hands. In the main security office, the older guard is calling the engineer, telling him to stop disappearing. The engineer is climbing down the elevator cable and can't get his walkie-talkie to answer. He slips down the cable and a chain from his protective gear tears open. Inside the elevator, the security guard is taunting the old lady with the expired pepper spray, when something heavy drops on top of the elevator. They can hear the old guard's voice from the top. In a moment blood starts coming in from the top panel. They can still hear the walkie-talkie and figure out that it's the engineer that fell. They can't break trough the panel to help. The detective goes to the roof to check on the shaft and sees the engineer on top of the elevator, probably dead. Tells everyone that the people inside of the elevator can hear the walkie-talkie and that they should switch channels. He orders the fire department to get inside the elevator trough the wall. The firemen start digging trough the wall. Looking trough the footage in the main office, they see that the old lady was stealing wallets. The detective comments that all of them were bad people. As he's looking at the screen, the footage from the security cam glitches again and shows all of the people inside dead, but only the cop can see that. Next, they find footage with the third man and see that he had a satchel with him when he walked in the lobby, but no satchel in the elevator. The lights in the elevator start flickering again, then go out. The security guard lights a match and there's something strange next to him. When the lights come back on, the old lady is strung up on one side of the elevator, dead. The detective sees that on screen and calls for a lockdown of the building, with everyone inside going to the lobby. The older guard goes to the basement. The detective and the younger guard are the only ones in the office, so the younger guard says there is a reason that they are the devil's audience. Inside the elevator, the two men take the old lady's body down. Meanwhile, the detectives look for the satchel and find it in a restroom near the lobby. The satchel has tools inside that the detective suspect might be used to rig an elevator. Back in the main office, the younger guard is left alone, so he starts reciting prayers over the comm. The people in the elevator don't like what he's doing. They talk a little, but quickly a fight between the two men ensues. The young woman is calling for the security guard to kill the other man. Back in the main office, while the guard is still praying, the detectives walk in and see what's happening in the elevator. They order the people to back away and put their hands on the walls. As the people in the elevator settle down, the cop asks the younger guard how his story ends. He tells him that they all die. His partner then tells him that the young woman has a record too, that she was married to a rich man and that she was in the building to see a lawyer. The two of them run in the lobby and find the lawyer. The only information he can reveal is that they should look into the people closest to her and that his specialty is forensic accounting. The detective asks to get the woman's husband on the phone. Meanwhile, the old security guard is in the basement and turns off the water. He informs the firemen and they continue breaking trough the wall. While still in the basement, he finds a wire that is dipped in water and tries to get it out. Moments later in the lobby, the people that are gathered start screaming as he falls over. The detectives run to his aid, but he dies. Back inside the elevator, the three people remaining start arguing again. The two detectives come back at the office, saying that the younger woman's husband might have arranged all of it, since he owns the security company that works in the building. The cops think that the security guard inside the elevator is responsible and that the other two victims were just a decoy. Back in the elevator the lights go out again. The detective tells them to use their phone screens as flashlights, but their phones get ripped out of their hands. The lights go out and the next time they come back on, the security guard is dead. The two people left, grab a piece of glass in a panic and stand prepared to defend themselves. Desperate, the detective asks the younger guard how he can help them. He tells him that they should take responsibility for who they are. So, the detective shares a personal story with them about that and asks them to put the glass down. They do it, 
reluctantly. Suddenly, the lights go out again and, and they come back on, the young woman is lying on the ground with a piece of glass in her throat. As the man is seen trying to help her, the body of the old lady rises behind him, saying that it's his turn now. The man has a flashback of himself driving a car. He's reaching for a beer, when he crashes into another car. He gets out of his car and sees the other one in a ditch. A woman lies pinned by a car and before she dies she points to her child lying in the grass in front of the car. The man can't believe what he has done and leaves the scene, leaving a note on the window of the other car. Back in the elevator, he keeps repeating that he's sorry and begs the old lady, the devil, to take him instead of the young woman. The devil refuses the bargain and hurls the elevator down the shaft. When it stops, the man finds the engineer's radio and starts talking. He tells the detective what he's done. The detective and the young guard are listening to him and realize what that means. Inside the elevator, the young woman finally dies in his arms and the devil is angry saying that she really wanted him. The lights go out and come back on again as the firemen are opening the doors of the elevator. The man is the only one left alive, speared by the devil. The old lady had disappeared. Later, paramedics are taking out the bodies and the detective sees the man sitting in the lobby, he says he will take him in the station. Next, the two of them are seen in a car. The man is in the backseat. The detective tells him that it was his family that he killed that day, but that after all of this time he forgives him. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.